Hey guys, Tiara here with Doc Girl Fitness, and today's video is all about how I manage my time and my top tips for time management and productivity. In an effort to start out on the same page, I think the best way to start this video is by getting down to the basics of what each of these are, because I think sometimes time management and productivity are used interchangeably, or people think that the same things that you do to manage your time well are the same things that you have to do to be productive. And I think that there is a lot of overlap, but I do think there are tips and tricks that are specific to each of these concepts individually. So what is time management? According to the Oxford Dictionary, it is the ability to use one's time effectively or productively, especially at work. Productivity is defined as achieving or producing a significant amount or result. Now, both of these concepts are very, very important, especially to those who are working in high stress jobs and trying to find ways to balance that career while also managing time effectively and being productive, not just at the job, but also in personal life. A recent meta-analysis performed in 2021 assessing the effect of time management on performance and well-being revealed that among all the factors that they assessed to evaluate for some type of association with time management, the biggest associations were between time management and job performance, academic achievement, and well-being. It also, interestingly enough, had an inverse relationship with distress, which essentially is showing that if you know how to manage your time well, it could have the ability to alleviate distressful feelings. This is easier said than done though, right? I mean, that's probably one of the reasons why you're watching this video to begin with, especially if you're in really high performing, high stress jobs, one of which from my perspective that I can relate to being residency. In the same regard, for those people who are watching this video at some point in your medical career, there's definitely a difference and there's an increased level of stress and an increased level of difficulty managing your time well and maintaining productivity as you go further along in the medical training. For example, in college, between doing your classes and doing your community service, you have a pretty good amount of downtime. I'm sure it doesn't always feel like that. And I'm not minimizing the time that you're spending doing either of those things. But in between those things, it's a little bit easier to be more productive and manage your time well than it is in medical school. And in medical school, whenever you're not in classes or you're not in the anatomy lab, or if you're not on the wards doing your clinical rotations, you do have that time in the evenings to study. Even though it's a little bit harder to do in medical school than it was in college, it's even harder to do that in residency because you're working up to 80 hours per week every single week and still having to manage the same responsibilities. To be honest, you're actually juggling probably a little bit more because in residency, you're truly working a job and whatever doesn't get done during the day, you have to finish up at night. So if you haven't finished your notes, those have to be finished up at night. And if you're finishing up your notes at night, then you still have work to do afterwards, whether that be studying for the next day, reviewing your patients and so on and so forth. Not to mention you also have to eat. And at some point you also have to sleep. And there are other things outside of residency that you have to take care of just to make sure that you're going about your day-to-day -day life outside of your academic and medical requirements. So that can be pretty difficult to juggle, but there have been people who have done it before and it's very possible for you to do it as well. And hopefully some of the tips that you learn about today are helpful for you if you are in some part of your medical journey or even if you're not, but you're in some stage of your career or in your life where you feel like you could be managing your time better or you could be more productive in your life. So with that being said, let's start out by talking about the tips for time management, and then we'll finish up with tips for productivity. One of my biggest tips for time management is organization. Organization truly is key. And I really resonate with something Benjamin Franklin was quoted as saying, which is for every minute in organizing, an hour is earned. That's so true. If you are able to effectively organize everything that you're supposed to be doing, that is the first step to allowing you to move forward and tackling everything that you have to do. My strategy for using organization to my advantage begins with looking at things from a very big picture first. I think the strategy also works pretty well for others as it's something that's even well promoted by those who are known to teach people in effective time management. Stephen Covey, who authored the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, states that once you have a clear picture of your priorities, that is your values, goals, and high leverage activities, 
organize around them. So I like to start out thinking big picture and kind of go from there. So we can use my life as an example. Things that are important to me that I will always need to categorize and organize my life around are my spirituality, my spouse, my career, my family outside of my immediate home, and my hobbies. So of those things, I like to think of what are maybe the top two or three things from each of those categories that needs to be accomplished within the next week or so. Of those biggest things, I then like to determine what their deadlines are. Then I break it down even further into which of those tasks will require the most versus the least amount of time and energy and preparation. And that alone is all I need to feel like I've organized myself into these categories of things that need to be accomplished in the week based off of the things that are most important to me and the things that really need to get done and it allows me to move on to my next step, which is list making. Forbes recently highlighted the psychology of the to-do list. And they highlighted research that shows that writing down what you have to do unburdens the brain, allowing you to lean into productivity. So not only is it giving you a clear picture of what needs to be done, but in addition to that, taking that pen, putting it to paper also allows you to tackle the other part of this video, which is productivity. So this kind of serves as a tip for both. Going back to my own personal life analogy, once I have those big categories of things that need to be done, I break them down into lists of things that need to be accomplished per category. I look into how much time each of these things will probably take, and I try to put that down next to each to-do list. So I'm going into the next part of my organization and my time management, knowing how much time to allot to each task. This leads me to my next point, which is the importance of scheduling deadlines. I like to have short-term goals and long-term goals as they relate to each thing that needs to be checked off of my to-do list because I feel like it allows me to accomplish more on each thing rather than putting all of my time and energy into one thing and then moving on to the next. Getting a timer of some sort and seeing how long it takes you to complete different tasks is very, very important because if you realize, oh, well, I thought it was going to take me 30 minutes to review some of the patient information that happened overnight for tomorrow, but it actually takes you an hour and a half, then maybe that's letting you know that you need to be changing the way that you're reviewing patients, or maybe you need to be breaking up that time and allotting 30 minutes here and 30 minutes there and intertwining other parts of things that need to be done with other tasks on your to-do list so you don't fall behind with any of the other things that need to be accomplished. So once I have my list of to-dos and I have my guesstimated amount of time that I would be spending on each task, I then like to create a schedule for myself and I usually do a new schedule every day in which I'll write down, okay, from this time to this time, I'll be doing this, from this time to this time, I'll be doing that, and so on and so forth. I'm sure you're realizing through this discussion and review of all of these different tips for time management that one of the most important parts of all of this is my very last tip, which is planning ahead. Preparation is so important and it's going to be the best way that you can ensure that you accomplish everything that needs to be accomplished and that you have an accurate roadmap for the rest of your day, for the rest of your week, even for the next couple of months, depending on how far in advance you're trying to manage out your time. Things are always going to come up in life and it may not always be realistic to follow everything in your list of to-dos or to complete every task that you've tried to time manage ahead of time. But by having a roadmap and a schedule for the way that things should be going in the coming days or weeks allows for structure, order, consistency, and a higher likelihood that the things you want to get done ultimately do get done. It's also a lot easier to manage those things in life that come up that we aren't expecting if we already have a roadmap ahead of us that we can adjust as things come up. So that's it on time management. Now that we're on the same page about what it is and we have our top tips about the best ways to do it, let's move full steam ahead with productivity. One of the first things I try to do when I'm trying to roadmap my productivity is to make sure I know why I actually need to be productive. I can't really speak for other career fields, but at least for the medical field and my own personal experience and the experiences that have been shared with me by my peers, it is really hard for people in medicine to shut their brain off. And it's really hard for them to not feel like they need to always be doing something. This sounds like it may lead to getting more things done, but it honestly can be a very quick way to burn yourself out. And it doesn't really allow you to maximize your productivity. Now there will always be something to do. There will always be something that needs to be accomplished, but I really challenge you to find time during the day to really sit back and recognize why do I need to be productive? 
on this day more than this day or at this time in addition to these other times and hopefully in the process of evaluating that you're able to recognize times in the day where you can give yourself a brain break because those are just as important as the moments in which you're being highly productive But let's say you've already decided you need to be productive, you have a couple of deadlines that need to be met, or you have a lot of work that you need to catch up on. If we're talking about from the medical perspective, let's say you've been on a really tough rotation and during the working hours, you haven't really had an opportunity to respond to emails or catch up on research, or you're falling behind on life things. One of the first things that I like to do is put myself in a position that allows me to remove distractions. This also kind of ties into the importance of recognizing the best times that you can be highly productive versus times you may as well take a break. Because if, for example, the end of the day is when you feel like you want to get things done because of your anxiety or your stress about accomplishing things, but at that time you haven't seen your family all day, or maybe it's really loud and you live next to a busy street and it's hard to focus, maybe that's time where you should unwind, relax, maybe exercise for a bit, spend time with family, take a brain break, and mentally prepare yourself for a time in which you will have minimal distractions and you can really focus on the task at hand. During these times of productivity, another way that I like to remove distractions is by either turning my phone completely off, or if I don't have the ability to do that, I put it on do not disturb. The iPhone even now has different settings that you can put your phone on based off of if you're driving, if you're trying to focus more, if you're trying to have downtime from screen time. I think it's pretty cool. I don't really know much about using it. I haven't really explored it much, but the best thing that works for me is by putting my phone on do not disturb. Sometimes I'll even text people and let them know, hey, I have a lot of things that I need to catch up on. And during this time window, I am unavailable because I am working to be as productive as possible during that time. Now that I know why I'm being productive and I have removed all of my distractions, the next thing that I feel really helps with my productivity is combining and clustering the different activities and tasks that need to be done. If I've really fallen behind on emails, I've also really fallen behind on research, I haven't talked to my family in a while, and I haven't given any time to God through Bible study or worship, then trying to do one of each of those things right after the other, for I don't know about you, but for me that would get really confusing. If I were to send an email and then reach out to one of my family members to check up on them and see how they're doing and then get a little bit done on the research project. For whatever reason, that does not work for me. I work best by clustering tasks. So if I have emails that I need to be sent, I look at all the different people who need an email response and I'll respond to all of those emails at once. Then once all of the emails are responded to, I will spend a designated predetermined amount of time on research, whether that be 15 to 20 minutes on each research project, or if I'm only working on one project, I'll spend about 30 to 45 minutes on that one project. And then typically I will leave phone calls or things like that for last, which leads me to my next tip, which is to prioritize the responsibilities and tasks that take the least amount of time first and move on until the last thing left is what takes the most amount of time. Now this actually may seem very counterintuitive and it may be different than what you hear from other people who are giving out tips and tricks on productivity. But if we go back to what we've already established is the definition of productivity, which is achieved or producing a significant amount or result, that is much easier to do if you are able to have checked off multiple things on your to-do list rather than starting with the biggest thing to tackle first and then not having any more time left allotted to you in the afternoon or the evening to accomplish anything else that may have taken less time to complete but was probably just as important. This also allows for things to be in motion, especially if it involves other people. For example, if you have emails to send to people and you know that it may not be another full 24 hours until you can check your email again outside of this designated time of high productivity, wouldn't it be better if you started out the time period you've allotted with sending out emails to all the people who need responses, then moving on to other tasks and then circling back to see if any of them have responded. Then if you have some time left over, you can respond to those emails and you've accomplished even more than you were expecting to whenever you started out the day and definitely much more than you would have if you would have started out with the thing that takes the most time. Something that takes me a really long time is preparing for boards because doing flashcards may be quick for me, but maybe sometimes I want to do a Q&A and when I'm doing Q&A sessions, I really want to take the time to review each multiple choice answer and look at what I got wrong and how I could do things better. I try to also assess my efficiency with answering questions in a timely fashion. So that can get kind of lengthy in time. So what I typically do is I start out with emails, 
I then move on to research. I may take one phone call or two, and that may be the only number of phone calls I can take in a day. And then let's say it's the end of the night. I've accomplished a lot, but I still haven't gotten as much done with board prep. Maybe that night is not the best night to do a Q and A. Maybe it's a better night to do flashcards, or maybe it's the best night to do one 15 minute video while actively listening and taking notes and then going to bed. And whatever has not gotten accomplished from something that needed to be done the day before, I try to prioritize that the next day. So each thing is receiving a high level of priority in my productivity, but especially at the beginning of the week, I do like to prioritize the simpler and quicker tasks first and the harder, longer tasks to last. Okay, last but not least, my biggest tip for productivity that also bleeds a little bit into time management is to reward yourself. You know, sometimes I can't complete everything on my to-do list and that can be really overwhelming sometimes, especially if you have a lot of things that need to be accomplished outside of your day to day. But something that I've implemented that helps me and just eases my mind is I make not only to-do lists, but also to-did lists. These lists are lists where I type out everything that I've done during the day. And I include not only the things that were on the to-do list, but all the things that came up in life that I got accomplished as well. And then it makes me take a step back and not only do I have a better perspective of how to manage my time in the days ahead, as I realize what was more realistic versus less realistic to accomplish in a day. But it also makes me realize, you know what? I did way more than I thought I did. And hopefully it gives you a sense of giving yourself more credit than you otherwise would have. And that's it. That was the last tip. These are the tips that have helped me so much, not just in undergrad or in medical school, but they are tips that I continue to use every single day. And I don't always get it right. It's a work in progress as it will continue to be throughout the rest of my life. So if you don't have it all figured out or you don't have the best way to manage your time all figured out at this point, give yourself a break and recognize that it's all a journey and we'll all get there eventually. But you're already taking steps in the right direction by even watching this video and trying to find ways to improve your current routine. Speaking of, what are the ways that you find are the best for you to manage your time? And what are the best tips that you've found help with your productivity? I'm really interested in knowing, and hopefully through sharing in the comments what our tips are, we can all help each other improve both our time management and our productivity. So let me know in the comment section below. But as for now, this video is coming to an end. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, if you liked this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or you just wanna chat, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. And if you like videos about medicine, lifestyle, and fitness, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.